Um, we're going to talk about design and automation. Um, I'm going to be kind of the designer that is going on the other direction, hearing like for the past two years about uh, tokens and, you know, strong principles and systems. I love all of that. I'm all for it. But I feel that given the fact that this is the last talk, I just wanted to give not only uh, us the possibility to uh, entertain the idea of, you know, what might be the future of design if we incorporate automation, um, but um, just to set the expectations, we're going to see some some weird stuff, okay? So, but before everything, I just wanted to take a minute to reflect on some of the things that Kevin said on the on the on one of the first uh, talks in day one. Um, I really like his um, his um, his take on taking a minute to understand uh, the state of the world and uh, how are we as as humans. That was incredible. Um, and uh, I wanted to start with with this reflection that we're living in a world that is very very hard. Uh, every day, uh, you know, things are getting more complex and more and more chaotic. We're living in in this reality that as um, you know, as you can see and, and read some of these words, you know, all of these things are essentially um, not in the way of our success or anything, but uh, it's definitely uh, elements that uh, are preventing us to be our best selves and also uh, preventing us to interact with other humans, which is really hard when you are trying to communicate things. Um, what, what, what are we doing to manage all of this? complexity in the world, right? Um, we need to have ways to think about this, models or, you know, mechanisms to, to you know, um, figure a way to reconcile our reality with the state of the world. Uh, and we are very creative and we are uh, passionate and we tend to get together when we share ideas and we have, you know, amazing uh, situations like the Miro board, and uh, you know, we last year we got uh, Fig Jam, which was kind of uh, um, uh, an amazing moment for the design community because we started to think about uh, um, a different experience for a whiteboard, which was really needed during the the, the hard part of the pandemic. I will say, um, we are writing more. I will say. Um, we are not afraid to uh, learn in public. We are trying to be more transparent to keep a newbie mindset that I called. Um, but in general, you know, there are ways for us to to cope with that. But I'm seeing something that is coming our way uh, that is very present in other industries, um, and 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 that is essentially automation. And I want to just to pitch that idea. You know, it's not that I have. Um, uh, something very strong and formulated. It's more like a, a like a, a hypothesis, you know, not just a, a thesis of sorts, you know. Um, it's not a it's not it's not gonna solve all of our, all of our problems. But if we can start thinking about this um, in a way that is a tool for us to fight complexity, as a tool for us to understand how can we produce um, different outputs without thinking about the process the way we think about it today, maybe it might be something uh, for us to consider. We, I have like some sort of a roadmap for today, and um, this talk is divided in three parts, but I have like some, some, some kind of a bullet points across this. So it's going to hopefully might be, uh, um, you know, a good guideline for you to understand, um, or hopefully at least for me to, to see if, you know, where are we going in time and, and whatnot. Um, so it's going to be kind of the first half, a little bit of, um, um, a, a, um, some sort of a roadmap into, you know, thinking about the parts that goes into automation uh and one of those parts i believe is really really important and we take that from granted which is you know using keyboard shortcuts and and understanding the possibilities that those things uh, gave to us and how you can start using them and then i'm gonna just show some demos on the way i use plugins every day which is kind of obsessed in a way and the i will say the better part of the of this where when we're going to start doing demos with scripter and automator and other tools that is going to be probably the, the, the larger part uh and this is me my name is Davo galaboti i uh senior product designer at datadog 
Datadog is a, a cloud monitoring company here in New York. Um, uh, it's uh, was founded in New York, but it's a global company. Uh, I believe my my good friend uh, Wang is on is uh, is watching me. Thank you. One of my heroes. He works on our design ops teams, which is a fantastic group of uh, humans that is helping us build stuff. Uh, Datadog is all about making sure that people who do stuff on the cloud, um, and especially people do that oper operationalize uh, the work workloads uh, behind everything we use from the Netflix to Figma, um, understand the, the health of their systems is, is, is a very, uh, very, very complicated space to work in, but super incredible and challenging as well. Uh, I'm an immigrant. Um, I born uh, in, I'm from Argentina. I'm in the US since I probably five, years or so i'm nearly virgin and yeah that's something really fair to say i really don't know what i'm doing uh this is me uh just to proof that i'm a human and i have the capacity to interact with some other people uh i have a, a, a photo team here with with um with the team at datadog during the uh, uh anniversary of one the, the first designer of our team john gala which is a human that i truly admire and yeah people that i work with and admire and this uh I, I believe it, I, I, Sylvia was missing in this picture, but this is the event that uh, Sylvia, Sylvia was talking about from Lubin and had a chance to share some code ideas with some of the folks at Framery, which, which was kind of a highlight for me. All right, so automations. What, what are you talking about, about when you talk about automations? Um, automations are already here. I'm not pitching something that is completely foreign or new. Um, or I'm sorry, or you know, it's like a trend or something. It's very, very well established, and it's getting closer and closer to the way we work. Even, even if we're you, we're using it or not. Like the first example that I have is uh, it's Mac, Mac OS Monterey, which last year uh, shipped with uh, shortcuts for Mac OS, and in this new release, it's going to add more integrations to it, which is something that we can actually use. I think the next one, if this and that, is probably one of the OG automation tools, which was this idea of, hey, I can connect and integrate this thing with this other thing. So if one alert, if one signal happens here, I can trigger something else there. Zapier was like the evolution of that idea. And today it's one of the leading, leading uh, tools uh, about that. Uh, I don't need to go, I, I don't think I need to go uh, over all of these. You can, um, take a minute and, and walk through this screenshots to see uh, by, by, by yourself. But uh, I think that th this one is someone that uh, some, something that I really like, which is the release of Git, GitHub Actions, which was essentially the answer to something that was happening um, on 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 a different platform, which is uh, GitLab. And um, and essentially, if you know GitHub uh, is this kind of a Wikipedia for code, where everything that is uh, every exciting piece of software that is being developed is being developing uh, is being developed uh, open source, and multiple teams, companies are essentially sharing uh, code and ideas and whatnot. Um, what they did is they integrated another part of the software development cycle, which is you know this part that when you have a new piece of software, uh, you can trigger uh, things that will happen down the line. And actions was kind of a, a really neat way to think about that. Um, another one to think about that I believe um, might not be very uh, uh, obvious is um, AWS step functions, which is um, um, the, the gist of it is uh, um, AWS, AWS is this, um, um, the largest uh, cloud service provider in the world, and they provide kind of a, the back end for everything that is happening on the web probably. And um, they are they decided to build something that is called Lambda, which is you know a way to spin a microservice or you know a little piece of a large distributed application. And in the past three years, they started investing more and more in a low code version of that, which means that people can start building stuff without without the need to know exactly how the thing works, you know. Uh, they, the only thing they need to know is how to pass a state, how to pass data to it. So if you can see across the line, uh, there, is, there is a pattern coming where no matter where you are and how complex the industry you are uh, is, there is a way to essentially understand how to turn something into a mechanical process. Um, 
Here is uh, a, a close example into GitHub Actions. This is part of um, my friends, uh, Maxime uh, has uh, been writing about building a design system from scratch. This blog post is an amazing uh, uh, way for you to understand what goes into building a, 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 a design system uh, for on your own. And he's doing this for his own uh, uh, blog. And uh, in, the, in the blog post, he describes not only the parts that we know about des designing a design system, which is you know the, the design part and the code, but this other part, which is the operation part, uh, which is uh, something that I really like. So that's why I added here. And uh, and down below is Airtable, and they just released uh, automations not long ago. And you know in the same vein, you know something very complex that might be you know uh, things that are being triggered by. Um, by a repo that it has a change or something very light which is a change on a data table and you can control things out the line um this is something that i hopefully hopefully i will have time to talk about so i'm gonna start just moving ahead um but yeah this is an example of uh, if this and that other automations that are happening are not exactly related to workflows that we know of but workflows that we don't know about which is you know using machine learning uh, runway ml a company from new york that essentially is bringing machine learning into the uh, um, video editing uh, pipelines and making turning some of the most tedious tasks like rotocopy um, into a very simple and you know in, even intuitive and fast that's probably the key word we're talking about a like hundred times faster than the way you probably do it we're doing it today or on, on the right this script this little tool that allows you to uh, not only transcribe audio and video but also edit those using the text this is incredible technology and this is all about in, in the same vein of you know how, how how fast we can go so in some ways the, the predicament of this part is that it, automation is coming uh, in, in, in some ways it's already here but the most important part is that uh, you know there is this notion that you know we're going to be replaced by these things but the, the thing that I really want to want to emphasize is you can think about these tools very creatively and hopefully this might be uh, the, the way uh, for us to think about the next part of this talk is going to be about shortcuts this is something that it feels like a task or something that um, you know Everyone knows you need to get better at this, but no one does it because it's a pain. You need to learn how to connect things and with the way you work. But I really believe that you can do it. And if you don't don't want to take my word from it, um, just trust some YouTubers that are actually now. This is this is a light joke, but um, there is some truth behind this. That um, there 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 is a lot of content about you know uh, improving. Your, the, the mechanical aspect of working with Figma by learning how to work with, with the shortcuts um, that Figma has and you know the new features that have been added. But there is something also that it's important that I want to emphasize here that this thing is about not not about chasing productivity or, or any of that because that is you know that's something that I'm not a hundred percent cool with but um there might be some truth in the way they're they're trying to describe the idea of you know making working yourself work working better work is matter and, and whatnot if you want to start and get like a, a one minute glimpse into why it's important to think about um working with your keyboard you should look at um clara's uh, video on youtube uh where she's essentially explaining a new feature from figma which is you know plugging parameters uh and in the same in this in during that same uh, uh video she describes um you know the mental model behind using shortcuts and i really really liked it um community uh the female community is you know incredibly talented and passionate and they have a lot of things um uh there there the, the, this this uh little uh, uh figma uh, file uh, allows you to learn how to use the the one on ones of shortcuts for the Figma UI with an interactive document, and it's really really neat. Um, there are also you know um, other ways for you to start memorizing these things, and the most important thing for me on this file is that uh, shortcuts also are also have international support. Um, the two ways that I found much better to uh, turn all of this all of these things into um day-to-day -day, uh you know um tricks or you know ways to think about uh 
uh, improving my workflows is by using either keyboard, keyboard maestro on macOS or um, a stream deck on Elgato. I believe uh, if I do this, uh, let me see if this works. Yeah. So maybe I can make this a little bit bigger and because I wanted to show you, um, hold on. So actually this is flipped for some reason. Well, let, let's abandon that idea right, uh, altogether. Sorry, I thought it was a good idea, but it wasn't. Uh, let me bring this back. So uh, I have a stream deck here and I want to show you in a minute uh, what some of the things you can do with it uh, because I'm running out of time and I just want to cover uh, more content. So um, the thing that I wanted to show you, uh, very, very simple, is uh, a problem that I have with when, when I was stress testing some of these things. Uh, this graphics that you're seeing on the screen are essentially part of this incredible effort from a designer. Um, he made this collection of 3000 ge geometric shapes that you can use. Uh, he made this two years ago and he essentially dropped a big file on his site. Uh, it's amazing, but I saw a challenge here of, you know, what happens if I wanted to turn this into a design system or it's not a design system, but how, that, that will, let, let's take that back. Uh, what if I wanted to componentize all of this? And so I did like a crazy person and it's possible. But the main thing is there, there are no real uh, ways to circumvent some of the shortcomings of Figma when it comes to naming convention. Because for the thing that I wanted it to, I needed to turn this from a frame, from a group to a frame and added a name following this convention. So for me, the best way to do it at the end of the day, after trying different things was uh, by using Stream Deck and recording this little thing which in a way is going to open the menu, it's gonna uh, invoke a, a plugin called uh, sort layers and it's, they're going to sort the layers by exposition. This is an important trick. And then renaming, uh, uh, running rename it, the plugin and waiting for a second until it loads so I can actually type the naming convention that I was, uh, that I wanted to add. Um, and that was the way uh, that I managed to take these 3000 shapes into a component system that is here. I will, uh, I reach out to this person to see if he's okay for me to share this as a, as a, as a thing. And the minute I have his uh, feedback back, I, I will tell you more about it. But I wanted to give you this uh, because I, I believe this might be something that we, we're not talking about, which is there is this, this, this quote that we're hearing forever, like should designers go? But I think that when we start thinking about workflows this way, when we start thinking about, hey, what happens if I take the most boring things that I do and I map them into a way that, it, that you know, I can use either, uh, you know, Figma's core functionalities, or maybe I can reach out to some plugins. There is a way for us to think about a plugin as a series of steps that you're doing uh, manually with shortcuts. And I think that's a, that's a, that's a, 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 a gateway into um, oper operation, oh, I'm sorry, uh, and turning your operations into something more uh, feasible. So um, um, for the next part, I want to talk uh, quickly about um, plugins and shortcuts. So, um, and I'll probably uh, I will need to go over this very, very fast. Um, the three things that I want to say here are, number one is thank you to the Figma plugin community. This has been for me, you know, since we started using, you know, when we evolved from Photoshop to Sketch, and now we're in this space with 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 Figma, I had never seen this amount of uh, creativity, innovation, uh, put into the hands of designers, and it's amazing. For me, um, this is the way I think when I build things today. Uh, I have one plugin that helps me create a page. I have another plugin that allows me to understand uh, at the end of the day, if I'm following design conventions, this is design linked from um, someone at Discord. Um, there's a tool that allows me to understand if I'm writing correctly. There's a tool that allows me to scale things from a uh, position, which is, you know, John, thank you so much for this plugin. I use it every day. Um, there is a plugin for everything. And there, there no one is there like, Hey, I want to build a plugin. These plugins are born because people are curious about something, about a possibility. 
maybe they are born because uh, um, some of the things that we do day, day to day on Figma are incredibly tedious and problematic, and you know they have literally bad UX to a point. Um, but it's really important. It's hard for me to measure the impact of this. It's I never seen this before. It's amazing. Uh, for instance, Smart Cloner from um, um, one of the persons that hopefully I will have the time to talk about uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, Smart Clone allows you to, once you have a, a, compo a component selected, make co copies of it, but you can trigger where you want that copy to be in and allows you to change the name in the same space. This is a, this is a little tool that saves you so much time. Uh, Figma tokens. I can even not. I can. I, I need like a week to get started with Figma tokens. This is an amazing innovation that uh, transforms dramatically the way you think about doing stuff with Figma. And more, if you want to work with data, you have JSON to Figma. You have Property Randomizer that I use every day because I have. I need to create tons of data, uh, and I want that data to be realistic. Or you have also a variant, uh, a variant uh, randomizer that allows you to have a component with variants and cycle through them uh, in a randomized fashion, which for me was a, a godsend. Um, all what all what I want to say with this is whatever you're doing with design systems, there there is a plugin, there is a workflow, there is a trick to make you work better. Think about this for a minute. Try to figure ways for you to. Um, take the works, the, 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 the parts of the work that are more complicated to reason about that takes more time, try to even lock them in a way, figure ways for you to uh, incorporate this idea of uh, ta automated tasks. Um, I'm gonna definitely skip this part. This whole thing was how I'm, I'm using uh, these plugins to create a table. Maybe we can talk about that in some, other, in some other time. Unfortunately, I need to skip that part because I want to really talk about these two things. Um, Scripter, number one, a plugin that I do hope you know. It's one of the most amazing things uh, that uh, was given to us by Rasmus while, while he was working at Figma. And essentially, Scripter was, uh, is, is the API from Figma uh, wrapped into a very smart, uh, you know, little tool that allows you to write code that is strict, strictly based on fi the, the possibilities of the Figma API. If you know a little bit about history uh, behind the design tools we use every day, you probably recognize this. This is the the, the basic example of uh, Create, Re Create React App. Um, I'm sorry, um, um, I totally forgot the, the proper name. I think it's somewhere here. Um, well, real problem, I'm sorry, it's, it's absolutely slipped my mind. I feel terrible about it. But, and I was waiting for some screenshot to appear. I don't care. Okay, I'm gonna switch to this because I wanted to show you how this works. Uh, this was more tricky than I thought because um, I just wanted to recreate that with the code they have, you know, tell them picking the colors and picking part of the processes. Um, but this this was more 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 hard um, to me to think about because it wasn't the same thing as um, the code examples that were on React because um, React SketchUp what they had was Flexbox and that was really really uh, kind of a, the 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 better part of it. So if you click here, if I click on that little thing, it just creates that. This is you know a, a grid of colors. Uh, this is an amazing little example. And what I thought it was so, super, something super simple and straightforward turned out to be very complicated because number one, I don't, I didn't have a way for me to write uh, um, a whole routine to check the contrast of color. So the way to do it is essentially you can actually import JavaScript um, uh, things into Figma without writing a plugin by using the worker that comes with Scripter which is fantastic. So because of that, I was able to pass the colors and, to the worker and the worker was essentially checking the color and giving me the contrast back. And that's why for essentially in these things, we have a, a nice little um, inverted color in some way. The craziest part about this is the amount of work it takes to create stuff uh, on Figma through the API 101, which is why I need to say thank you to the plugin developers. That's a lot of work. Uh, I prob you probably remember this, this was for me one of the um, one of 
one of the first thing that I saw on Figma that made me realize, oh man, this thing is going crazy. This was made, um, well, years ago and uh, was not longer, it's not longer maintained, but still just brings the same idea. And the whole thing is, you know, pressing this and getting like a bunch of endless, uh, <laughs> uh, endless layout uh, generators. I really love this. But I was thinking, you know, what happens if you need to build that for from scratch, right? So Scripter allows you to save the script. So you once you select it, you will have that script being open when you have it back. Here, the only thing you need to do is just select a frame. And I have this little little program that essentially is going to uh, divide uh, the space that I have selected into iterations. So if I press two, this is going to be the, divide the space just into parts and randomly and recursively, which is the beautiful part. And if I go uh, crazy, like six, six, six recur recursions, you're going to get something like that. That is something that you can do with Figma today. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, I will skip this part uh, and also this one because we don't have a time. I completely miscalculated the amount of content, but it's okay. Um, this is something that I really, I, this is something that I really, really liked this uh, idea of, you know, daisy chaining things. So here we have Scripter and Automator. I will talk about Automator in a minute, but what this thing is doing is I'm gonna pass the URL of um, one of, you know, famous uh, design tools that we can use to create colors or to explore colors, col uh, colors is called. And if I click here, this is going to replicate this element and add the color inside. And I skip one part because I just wanted to see how this works. I just I'm gonna press play. This thing happens incredibly fast and essentially have this 10, 10 colors created for me. The problem that I have is I don't have nothing to understand uh, or you know to really provide more into uh, the color the color itself. So I thought about uh, what if I take the color value and ask an API that is out there is open. I thank you so much. Uh, I forgot your name um, about this uh, API that um, helps you match uh, an X value with a wonderful name. And um, because I have an option to match this with a crazy color name, I will run that with a yes. And let me see what happened. Something, something didn't work. Uh, yes, uh, let's see now. I don't know what happened. Um, automator is not running apparently. Okay, let's just skip to the next thing. Um, I wanted to show you this. This is a this is a neat idea. I I believe um, you can use the same things that I showed you a second ago. Um, uh, using web workers to uh Im import uh libraries and you know do complex things. Um. This is a way for uh, Scripter to run something as complex as D3. So uh, here I'm passing, um, using the frames um, to pass uh, size and the name of a symbol, which is a stock symbol. If I run this, uh, I will get real-time graph data. This is not an SVG, um, a PNG. This is a, this is a vector file. You can do stuff with it. This is amazing. And the way it works is essentially, this is D3 code. Uh, the worker has is headless means that I can I can use it as a web browser literally and it creates the SVG and then outputs the SVG and you can pass that SVG back to Figma. That is simply amazing. You can do crazy stuff like you know uh, I have Amazon over here and I will resize this chart and click play again and I have uh, Amazon with some fancy dots. Um, some other stuff that you can do with um, Scripter, something that I feel it's still missing on the platform, um, creating screenshots. This is going to take a minute, but um, I will maybe we can, I can move to the next uh, uh, slide. I'm running out of time. Um, yeah, so it, the thing was generated, and now it's essentially I'm fetching the image from cloud storage, and I have that image here. Uh, without living, uh, without living uh, Figma, it's amazing. Uh, some other stuff uh, that you can do. This is Automator as well. Um, Automator works uh, with um, keyboard parameters. So if I have a new automation, I can run it from here. 
So here, um, essentially, I selected a word and I told Automator, hey, just give me the, the, the description of that word from uh, Urban Dictionary. And I got the, the, the result back into the thing right away. But I wanted to leave you with this because I just wanted to give back to the community. This is something that I started to build years ago. And unfortunately, I'm really bad and I keep leaving projects behind. I want to give you a minute if you can scan this and help me with this idea. And uh, this is essentially me uh, trying to stop my data hoarding um, because I think we can do better when we, when we share stuff. Uh, there are a lot of really good ideas being discussed in the open, design systems being designed uh, in the open. Um, and I have a large collection that I've been, I've been gathering since probably since I saw uh, Adele uh, from UXPIN um and essentially uh, talking to someone I, I learned that maybe having just a list of all the repos might be something helpful if the repo is private so if you scan this you probably will see this form so this form essentially it's uh, creating this list uh here also i'm using um uh, Airtable, and my point here is what happens if i essentially uh, have an automation that creates things for me so i have my automation here it's called let me open this very widely um so i can have more space and this is going to fetch this table uh, and it's going to create some stuff for me i added some parameters here so it's easier for me to say like um, you know how many records that do i want because this can run forever um and if i press play this is going to essentially fetch the uh, not only the data from my table, but also it's going to fetch the screenshots. Uh, the screenshots were already created. One of the amazing possibilities that we have today with, um, with Automator is the possibility to uh, do this type of thing. It's, uh, it's amazing. I wanted to show you more stuff, uh, things that are possible to do today with Automator, but I need to go back to the presentation so I can, I can wrap this up. Um, the thing that I really wanted to learn more, and it will take five more minutes if it's possible, because I really want to talk about this. Um, and I need to understand if I can share. Uh, okay, let's see if I can do it. In the middle of the process of building this, um, what I learned is that I didn't know much about the people behind these things. So I reach out to some of these people. Some of them, I know them. Um, and some of them I don't. I've been using their tools since forever. Uh, the first one that replied back to me was Pavel. Um, I, I'm, I, I believe I met him. I didn't meet him. I, I talked with him uh, in the Framer Classic uh, years. Uh, but he is here in New York, so we, we have coffee together. Uh, Joan Shin uh, is in Singapore, so we have like 12 hours gap and we talked about plugins and, and his take on it. And I had a three minute talk with Jordan from from um, from Diagram and he essentially told me some stories about Automator and whatnot. Um, let's see if I can run this. I prepared some something. Uh, let me see if it's this works because I think it's one of these things. And I need you to let me know if you can hear this. Like maybe four yeah, or five yeah, plugins. And I, I, I wasn't bored or some, something <laughs> like this, but, you know, I thought that, okay, I already wrote some, I think, helpful plugins. Now I can, like, do it something for fun. And uh, I, like, I start to think about this, this extension in Chrome. If at our office, if someone uh, forget to lock his computer, so it's some sort of punishment, you know, someone should add this this extension and replace all images to Nicholas Cage images Absolutely. and they thought that uh, it should be the same thing for Figma as well like a, a security punishment you know uh, so uh, yeah th this is how I come up with this idea and the challenging there was that you need not only replace all images but also put them back because it, it could ruin a lot of work so uh, but hopefully there was a Figma storage and this is how I, how I solve this problem. When... Um, yeah, so Pavel told me some other stories that I wanted to share with you because 
this is the passion behind behind these people. Um, also, when like someone like write you an email or something that like or make a comments in Figma that okay, like thank you, it was a helpful plugin. I, I'm very glad, but I believe I'm glad when when what I'm doing is good and helpful for other people. But I, I'm doing it actually for myself firstly, and, and then for other people. I encounter with a problem that I need to like fulfill like many, many things with data, with real data uh, and how I can solve it. First, I, I do it for myself. So I face with the problem by myself. And then I think, could it be helpful for other people if I will share it? Then I decided, okay, I need to, to make a publish plugin, you know, and to share it because I believe in open source. And actually this is why I don't have like a, payment module or some sort in my plugins. Yeah, some people uh, told me, no, you need to sell your plugins if you want to, you know, because it, like you did the job. And I understand the thing is how I do doing this, this, this plugins because I'm doing it in my free time. I can't guarantee, unfortunately, to other people that I will man maintain it like year by year because maybe I will change the job. Maybe I will like change uh, the, the area and will do completely different stuff. So th that's why I, I think I can't actually take money from people because I can't uh, provide any guarantees that I will maintain the plugin and evolve it. I, of course, I'm trying when I, when I see a lot of feedback. Yeah, this is the, actually the reward for me is like all the people, but the self-education and like after I did some, some plugins, I come up with, with, with many new things that I didn't know before. Uh, one of my heroes. Okay, Bob. Vadim, uh, maker of great tools like Retextifier, Quantifier, uh, the smart learner tool that I was telling you about, a style generator, Awesome, awesome person. We have a long conversation, uh, like an in-person conversation, and uh, he told me that same thing, probably the same thing, you know, finding himself on a challenging thing and figuring like, can we generalize this into a plugin? And then, hey, maybe this is helpful for other people. That is an impressive uh, thing that not a, a whole lot of people do. Uh, talking to Joan Shin also, I learned kind of the same thing, but Joan Shin, it's essentially going really into this space where you know not only open sourcing all of his plugins which some of them are incredibly useful like insert big image that allows you to insert images at large the you know large dimension images and split them uh the, the plugin splits them in, in parts so it's uh easier on figma it doesn't break any rules but also you have a high quality image or you know uh, flatten selection to bitmap that allows you to uh flat uh, essentially raster uh, your design at any um, um, uh, scale without exporting it so you have the same file inside figma which is really really helpful he not only open source all of his plugins but also he built create Figma plugin which is all the foundations for the, his plugins so you can actually build your own uh, which you know is amazing and he essentially told me about his passion of um, uh, to, to see other people uh, becoming better designers by using not only his tools, but by learning and, and educating themselves into the possibilities of doing these things. And uh, Jordan, uh, well, talking to Jordan was incredibly fun because uh, he's such a, you know, probably this is, is kind of a new breed of designer. He is incredibly open. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter and you probably know everything about him. But he told me the story behind Automator. I think it's almost part of what um, I hope to do with Automator to some extent, which was that the, you know, Automator started with this idea that I'm sure you know Joey Banks on Twitter. He reached out to me one day and was like, you know, he's he's building his massive iOS 15 UI kit, and he was like, man, you know, this thing broke, and I'm gonna have to go into like 500 different instances and manually change this thing, and I was like. Immediately, I was like, okay, maybe we could write a little bit of plugin code to like automate that thing and fix it, which we did. But then I was like, wow, you know, there's, there's a lot more repetitive, cumbersome, tedious things that designers do day to day. They don't always have the luxury of having an engineer to write a Figma plugin for them. What if you could expose, you know, the power of the Figma API in a visual way that was essentially this no code tool for Figma. 
And, and so that's what I hope we kind of started to do with where Automator is at today. And, and I, I think it's also, it, very, it resonates with me, like this idea of like power users. I think we definitely have captured that audience who you, you'll be able to get much further with Automator if you understand a little bit of logic and code and you can use those variables and stuff like that. But where I think it starts to get really powerful is when you can share those automations with the community and they can download them. And so it's almost like we have our own plugin community within the Figma plugin community. And the great thing is that with a Figma plugin, like you said, you didn't quite find any grid generator that did quite what you wanted. With Automator, you know, someone could use your grid generator plugin and also duplicate it and then add their own little twists to it and have the full, you know, source to edit. I hope that that's what's working towards making automation at least a bit more accessible and so that you don't need to learn the full Figma API to make powerful automations. Right. That's uh, my case. I had, I, I absolutely miscalculated the amount of content that I have uh, clearly. And, uh, but, you know, I'm happy if you have time and you want to essentially learn more about this, I'll be happy to answer your questions or go over some of the other material that I prepared for this talk, which is, you know, uh, going very into, you know, uh, things that you can do. Um, I, I guess the last one I, I will say that I really, really like the demo is this, which is um, clip drop that is about to drop uh, in some, probably in the future. Uh, not not long from now, but yeah, this is actually something that's common. Clipdrop is using machine learning to turn an image, which is this is a, an image um, um, an image from uh, Unsplash. If I press click here, this thing is amazing. This is what I was thinking when uh, when I was thinking about what, what what might be the Ramway ML from Figma, and you know, folks are already doing it because some of the uh, models behind these things are open source, so you can actually build your own machine learning model to do something very complex as the thing this thing is uh, about to do. Um, so this thing just uh, took that image and broke it in half. So now I just I made another thing here that I wanted to show you. Just you can do this. You know, it's the same image, but just I have another background block. So your design can go somewhere else that it wasn't possible before. Because uh, to do something like this, you can you can actually take the time and doing it on Photoshop. But we're talking about an hour or so to professionally do it before like, and instead you we I just I think I spent it like less than thirty seconds on it. So yeah, so uh, that's me. Um, I will hope um, and yeah. And because I'm uh, such a huge nerd, some of these things are going to be uh, in the open for you to look at. But yes, I wanted to uh, tell you that this was uh, an amazing opportunity for me. Some of these uh, ideas and, and, and things uh, were created with a little system that behind the scenes is also, um, you know, a themable. So I have a, a theme generator. If I run this, you can uh, generate infinite colors <laughs> with, uh, in different compositions and the graphs behind it are always on this um, little uh, 3000 experiment of uh, shapes turned into components and that allowed me to create this thing that is also part of the system so if I turn this into another randomized thing this can essentially randomize the colors of this which is really neat and you can go levels deep into this space and that's why uh, it's important for you to number one learn and expand your the, your imagination into the things we know about sometimes we really get caught out in the idea of you know we're designing uh, ui but at the end of the day we're also des designing uh, experiences and we can do more if we just uh, expand our creative capacity this is taking forever because there are a lot of shapes and I'm just randomizing the colors from each one. Um, and you know, you can see that sometimes, imagine you changing the color of all of these things one by one uh, because you have to do it. And now we just, with a click of a button and some you know, time you can actually have all of these colors uh, automated. And this is, um, yeah. If you have questions, I'm open to, um, to, I think my camera died. Let me see what happened here. I want to take a second.
Hey. Hi, Davo. Thank you so much. <laughs> Personally, I mean, you have a new follower here, and I don't think I'm the only one because look at the, the chat like here in Zoom. You have way more followers now. I mean, your talk was amazing. And honestly, since uh, I mean, we could just go on a bit more if you are okay with it, and maybe yeah. you can show more. Uh, uh, you can show us more about maybe tables because a lot of people actually were asking about, hey, can I, how can we automate the, uh, automating uh, tables? And I can personally relate. I had to work a lot with them, and it wasn't easy. I mean, I cried a bit sometimes. So yeah. if you can. Uh, give us some yeah. insights would be amazing. Feel free to show some stuff you skipped because the crowd yeah. is going crazy in the chat. Yeah. Everyone can wants still, to see. Yeah. Can really, you still see my screen? Yes, we can. All right. So um, th that's the, the, the demo about using um, um, plugins and you know, think your way around adding data or creating a realistic looking table. Um, for me, it was, you know, years in the making while working at Datadog because we are meet with an incredible challenge, which is, you know, very hard edge case from the get go. It's not like, oh, that might be, no, everything is an edge case and you need to have a system that allows you to do um, pretty much everything. So, um, general um and Wong and many other people from the design app team keep uh, are essentially maintaining a set of um components that are helping us work on that uh, direction but behind each of these things you as, as a designer has you have a lot of agency in the way you can work you don't you know the design system is not constraining you so for instance number one the, the number one thing that you can think about uh, when you're generating a table and you don't have data is how the how can you generate data you know so um one um let me think about this for a quick minute this this might be a, a weird trick but uh this is uh, something that you can you know you can build if you're a little bit ingenious um so i'm using Airtable. you can you can connect Airtable at some point right but um and let's use this so um, this is a this is a name generator that I built that I built with Airtable. So Airtable allows you to essentially create things. In this this case is words, and uh, I have a collection of words that are also generated. And um, here I have a little function that essentially what I'm doing uh, with this function is um, that this part is dynamic. I don't recall. Let's see if I have it over here. So one formula you can have on, on, on Airtable is a take the random values of these words and uh, concatenate them, just add them into a single string. And in that way, you now have a realistic looking piece of uh, data. So the only thing that I'm doing here is I'm copying this and I'm going to run Retextifier, which is probably the plugin that I use the most every day. That, that's why I was one, it really intended to talk to Vadim and just tell him like, thank you, man, because of what you do. Just copy the thing, um, command C, and if you do command uh, command shift B, you just uh, with this, with the thing in focus, um, you just selected all of this data. So I'm gonna get, go back, run the textifier once again, command shift B, boom, I have all my data, press, and I have that. Um, that is one trick, right? Um, if I select all um, all the text layers, uh, sorry, let's do this here. Um, I don't know why I just became a little bit <laughs> nervous for some reason. I, I'm selecting through by selecting the fill of the uh, uh, of my cell. I have uh, uh, actually selected the text layer. I can run now a plugin called uh, Prop Randomizer, which I believe is. Uh, it's incredibly underrated. People don't know about this plugin. This plugin is life-saving because it allows you to essentially run randomizations uh, from each property on each uh, Figma node. So you can change properties from like visual properties or content properties. So in this case, I want to update the 
um, data on this column. So I'm gonna say just, I want about values, random values between 50 and whatever, and I can add a custom uh, suff suffix, like, you know, or maybe this is this is money numbers. We're talking about money now. And boom, I press this and I have money values. No. This is better than content real because in content real, I, you need to put that collection and need to build all of that. In this place, I have total control. The thing about this is um, if you have um, a, a little chart behind, like the way we do at Datadog, um, you can uh, you can actually have the values of that map as components, so as component variants, as the way I have it here. So one thing you can do with um, with variance uh, randomizer is essentially tell you, I can tell variance randomizer a hey, uh, take the value which is the the, the, the thing that is the, the variant part of the component and just randomize it you know boom you just have a more realistic looking table same thing happened with this I can just select this little component this batch component and randomize it and I will have a more realistic looking table in, and it didn't took much time the all the elements were there um, the thing that I've been uh, in, um, trying with Scripter is, um, which, you know, funny thing, uh, I learned about that uh, by exploring some of these ideas in the past and I use them here. Um, one thing you can do with Atomator is, um, with, I'm sorry, with Scripter, is I can take the value of the numbers and create a scale and then map that scale with the values of this uh, variance. And that I call essentially data to variance pattern. Um, I will not demo that because you know some of the things might be broken, but I can definitely demo that here. So, for instance, this is a little <laughs> trick that I when I saw it, I was like, oh man, I just this is unbelievable. Uh, when I built this uh, shapes uh, thing, I need to learn what's the last value here. This one. Um, I'm gonna pick this and I'm gonna uh, scale it and I'm gonna you know, white why this thing is connected with the thing that i was telling you about because behind the scenes what i'm doing what i'm using is variance so in in this little huge uh 3, shapes turned into components piece uh what i have is a little system and all these, these things are increments in number right and this increments allows me to essentially run scripter uh and scripter what, what i'm gonna ask him let me see if i found um the proper script which is, this is the thing that I feel a little bit that uh, Scripter is showing his age, that it's really hard to navigate across your your variants. So I want, I'm looking for variants, um, iterate variants by prop. So this thing is, oh shoot, that wasn't the script that I was looking for. Duplicate variants by prop. So is this one the, Yes, so it's uh, it hasn't shown there yet, but all these variants, unfortunately, they're not keeping the color. Uh, I can probably improve that. But what happened there is I took that variant, and that uh, variant, what just did to me, uh, for, for me actually, was um, it took all of these siblings and duplicated this instance and incremented that uh, that copy by adding the variant that has. So this is added at ten. And this is now, um, this is out of 10, 11, 10, 9, and all of these things allow me to essentially create this type of uh, generative artwork, right? So um, that is uh, something you, you can actually do. The, 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 there is another thing behind this that I really liked. Uh, I have a vector here, which is this shape. Um, this shape, I, I probably need to open a new page for this. Um, what would be the best way? Let's do this. Um, uh, shape spectrum and I want to um, make this more visible have this shape I want to put this shape in zero zero so it's easier and one th one thing that I feel it's not in Figma for some reason uh, and it's hard to do is what happens if, if I wanted to distribute uh, a node uh, on a path I want to add node I want to add stuff uh, um, around a shape, which is something that is possible on the web. It's possible on processing. It's possible, you know, if you know how to do stuff with SVGs. This thing, what it's doing is um, doing some incre incredible math. Uh, I 
um, essentially with the same worker thing, I import in something that is called SVG path commander, and I'm passing the data of this shape, essentially is the SVG path data. And with that data, what I can do is I, I tell this script, hey, give me 12 points around this data, and then give me the coordinates of that point. And then I'm passing from the, work, work, with, with, from the worker back to Figma. And I'm telling like, I have 12 points, let's place some images across, uh, across that. And that's uh, how I ended up landing uh, with this kind of a crazy generative patterns. So in my head, that, that was an exercise. That was something creative that I really liked. And, but this allows me now to not only do like generative things with a control system, but the more important thing that this uh, essentially is creative iteration. I can feed back some of these ideas back to something that is my day job, which is, you know, how to, how can I improve the way I work with tables? I will never have to distribute data tables across something like that, but I most definitely can use the notion behind, which is, you know, how can I control something uh, with something as, as complex as, as 3000 shapes on a component system? Uh, how can I control um, complexity? You know, how can I essentially figure ways uh, for me to understand how to do stuff with with um, with Figma, and that's that's why I really I'm fi I, I find myself very um, uh, you know uh, engaged with what what is happening with uh, with Automator. For instance, uh, the the automation that that um, uh, Jordan was talking about is this grid generator. Uh, if you if you don't know, it's really hard to create a grid in Figma. It's there there are no tools. Uh, you can create you know you you can create grids on the UI, but those grids are not present when you need to present them, let's say on what you're presenting a prototype or a presentation. Um, you can, I can definitely create that with Scripter, uh, but I was walking, uh, wondering, uh, can I create that with an automation? So I created this grid generator and this essentially uh, is going to take a little frame, I believe. Um, yeah, it's taking a frame. So uh, the way Automator works is, um, you need to think about it as a visual representation of the API of Figma. And it's super, super intuitive in that way. I have a selection. So when I'm running Automator, it's gonna, it's gonna, I have an action called get the current selection and I can store variables. And these variables are essentially the width and the height of that element. And I'm also storing things like uh, how many segments do I want? Uh, um, and, um, and what else? So here, I, uh, the first action that is, is going to be prompt to the user is how many uh, places you want this grid to be spaced. Uh, and so if I do something like 24, um, this is going to essentially run this two times, right? Because I just want a full grid and it created a grid for me. Uh, and obviously it's not a whole lot, but when you think about what just happened and, and that's why, you know, uh, John was, uh, was telling me like um, uh, that he uh, on purpose made something that in Scripter happens in one second. So I can run this kind of same script on, on Scripter and it will have that thing instantly happening. But he was very interested in some something that was mentioned by a speaker before, which is the designer experience. And for us to have this moment of just reflection, and, hey, this is just working. This is literally iterating something for me in the UI. That is something that he wanted it to keep because it was kind of important for him. Uh, some of the some of the way um, I'm, I'm using uh, Automator today as first as, a, as an exploratory tool, but tomorrow I might be be using it for something uh, more. Let's say if, if you're exploring a, um, a, a new font for your system, uh, how can I use this tool to just generate all of these things for me? Once I have something like this, can I duplicate this and just create another set uh, for another typeface so I can actually have a sample of it without the hassle of creating some of these things? Or, you know, uh, right now, uh, the thing that I found very fascinating was, you know, how far I can push it in the sense of, you know, creating UI automating the process of creating a UI. And um, yeah, so um, co coming back to the table kit thing, uh, I do have a job uh, to get some of these ideas back to my daily, uh, daily um, uh, activity. And I think some of the challenges are, for me, map the things that I know work better on something like Automator, uh, map the things that I know work better uh, using something like Stream Deck, 
or the things that I can use uh, with um, with Scripter. You know, there is um, th this tools can complement with one another, and, and that that was kind of a, the gist of this um, um, demo that I was uh, trying to do before uh, when you uh, when I was generating colors from Scripter and then renaming them uh, with Automator. Um, yeah. Selby, do, do you have any other questions in regard of that? The, the, was that helpful? Hey, Dao. Yeah. This was an amazing, 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 amazing presentation. Where I, is the camera, Dao? We don't see you anymore. We are speechless. The camera has an issue because it's too hot here, apparently. <laughs> the does. content is yeah. too hot. <laughs> it's too hot. It's too damn hot. We can relate with the camera. I mean, our mind are blown up and looking at the chat. I mean, we are not the only one. I mean, I'm kind of speechless after your presentation. I mean, my God. Uh, yes, you have a new fan base group now. So <laughs> be happy about it. Yeah, please give people. us really a, a lot a of love and amazing. Really, 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 we really are really your cool. groupies now. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Amazing, thank you. amazing. Uh, really cool. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, yeah. But I really want to emphasize that there are heroes in this community, which are you, Fox, um, you know, taking time to organize and promote this type of uh, platforms to open the conversation and take a, a, a view into the way we are working. Uh, and also people like these people that are essentially, they're taking the time to build these things, to reimagine. Uh, and even in, in some ways, like the this the success story of Jordan, you know, having a $3 million round for, uh, for his company, he just founded Diagram two years ago, a year and a half ago, uh, he was working at uh, Cash uh, here in, in New York, um, building UI, but, he was uh, all he he's always like that sharing things on twitter um um just opening uh, possibilities for people and this uh, thank you uh, sylvia for giving me the opportunity to talk and share some of these ideas i just wanted to just make sure we we reach out to other to to one another and talk more and you know if you have the, the time and if you're using some of these tools do please i just beg you reach out to the people who are behind it the camera died again uh, because uh, these people are incredible but also uh, when they're doing these things uh, in in uh, in the open uh, they're giving you the actual uh, avenue for you to evolve and to discover and remix these ideas and make them your own and that is something that i find still find very fascinating you know you're wrapping it up perfectly yes that's exactly <laughs> our intention you know yes. like we are uh, well sylvia is heavily out there just trying to reach out to as many people from the community as possible saying hey you want to give a talk at our <laughs> conference like christina today can you believe it was her first time giving a talk yeah the one on multi-brand design systems she was very nervous yesterday we practiced with her can you believe it was her first talk and she rocked. And this yeah. is like into design system should be the platform for creators, for designers, design system friends to share the knowledge mm -hmm. and their projects. That's like exactly what our vision here or mission. Yes. And of course, we have some questions for you in the Q&A and uh, in the chat as we were going through. Mostly people wanted to see the tables and they wanted to see <laughs> everything that you were skipping. They're like, no, don't. <laughs> um, so I think uh, uh, well, one suggestion that came up uh, as uh, you were giving the talk, I think we should make a workshop. What do you think? Yes, please. Yeah. please yes. Yeah. Let us know in the chat if you're interested in a workshop with Davo on automation and all this cool stuff. Because I think we I could think save it. so <laughs> much time with this <laughs> Maybe it's seven amazing day workshop. seven day workshop somebody <laughs> wants yeah next week double <laughs> would you be up for giving a workshop for the community because it's like amazing stuff you showed us today yeah absolutely uh and um i there, there were parts of um uh, some uh, other automations that i didn't uh had a, the time to show um the, i think one thing to be said uh, is that um, I, I think Jordan described that in, in that little bit that I put is that there, there is kind of a feels like a secret mission that is happening, but 
Automator has this sharing capacity. You can export the automations. You can send them here. And, and it, now we have like a nested plugin community <laughs> inside of a plugin, which is fantastic. But the important thing to take uh, away from this is um, Automator is um, making uh, the process of making plugins more accessible. And this is twofold. Number one, because now you don't need to be a complete, uh, you know, code wizard to build automations that makes your world easier. That's number one. And number two, because we have this new way of sharing these things, um, you also have access to the source code, which is the automation itself. And that is something that really resonated with me in the sense of um, thinking that we have open source tools out there that you can use. I sometimes I don't have the time. That's why I do have a lot of scripts. You know, uh, I don't have the time to turn them into plugins. But uh, with uh, with Automator, I, I started to see that hey, maybe I can think about this in some other way. Um, yeah, but uh, it's is a is a is a very interesting thing. And even these days, uh, someone made uh, something incredible and it's really really tricky but really cool. Uh, this is essentially is a an icon grid sorter. Doesn't look like much because there are plugins that does this, but this is this behind the scene has something that is really really cool, which is something that Figma to this day really sucks at. Figma <laughs> doesn't support two dimensional grids. So you, when with auto layout, you have the ability to uh, essentially grid things in one dimension. So you can build rows or you can build columns. But if you can build, if you wanted to build a table, there's no way to do it. And that's why the little sketch thing that I did, um, the, the thing at, at the very beginning, uh, this took forever for me to build because in React SketchUp, you have Flexbox and Flexbox gives you this for free. So when you run this, uh, you write in React code and you just say like, hey, this is going to be using Flexbox. So you don't need to think about the limits of the fifth item in this list. It just happens to be on the second row. To do that in Figma today with Automator or with Scripter or with whatever magic tool, it takes a minute. And for someone just to take the time to build it and share it, now this looks like an icon grid sorter and it's going to sort shapes for you. But the way I'm thinking about it this has just told me what is the best way today to use Automator to build a grid. Uh, and that grid can be a table. So that's my, my point. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Huge shout outs to Jordan yeah. from Automator. I think we should invite all of the creators you have mentioned to our next event. It was amazing. Yeah. In, the, in the end, it is the in future process. of design systems. Well, yeah. So. <laughs> So when I Absolutely. asked, I reached out to you, Davo, a couple of weeks ago, I knew that you are going to kill it and that's the perfect talk for this kind of conference. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Really amazing content for taking the time Everyone to create is really happy. this. Everyone is really happy and we want to see you again. <laughs> Absolutely. It was a pleasure to be here. Uh, I need to drink some uh, some liquids now and before my <laughs> computer and my camera dies again. I'll be happy to answer uh, questions or if you, any any of you have anything that is like, hey, I need a minute with this or I'm trying Automator or Script or anything, uh, I'll be here for the following hours to help you with anything. And you can follow me on, on Twitter and I'll be always more than happy <laughs> to help anyone. With. Yes. Well, well, I'm curious, since you're talking about automation, how do you feel about this meme that was shared. <laughs> oh, Sorry. wait, we, we lost, uh, you're on mute, you're on mute. Yeah, okay. that is absolutely true. Uh, I need to open um, the mirror. The mirror. <laughs> I had a slide made for that same joke, which is <laughs> that, 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 that meme of the person who has like a, the, the, the largest oil bottle in the world is like a chef that is pouring uh, oil uh, you know uh, have you have you seen that um let me, let me see if i can put it on uh <laughs> but yeah i that is that is one of the challenges of this you know to understand um you know how much time it takes for something to be automated versus uh let me see if i can uh find the mute i think it's here right can you see Mm -hmm. so many things. 
Okay. Who should I follow? Um, I, let's see. I'm going to drop this image here. Um, yeah, it's, the, 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 I think the challenge uh, why you're not letting me export this image. This is <laughs> embarrassing. Okay. We need an information. Live content. show. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I'll just go yeah. over the post-its from the yes. mirror board. Oh, let's see. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's amazing <laughs> feedback. I think the best uh, we ever got. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, there, there comes a meme. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that for me, yeah, yeah summarize yeah. the whole thing, you know, it's powerful but you really need to be mindful about the time it takes for you to have some of these things because it's that chase that you feel, ah, oh, I'm super close, I'm super close. And that's why I really wanted to start with the notion of shortcuts, you know? Mm -hmm. Figma did something last year, which, you know, some people didn't cut it up as something very, like a, an innovation, but this thing called plugin parameters is such an incredible tool. And um, Jordan designed a part of Automator around that feature. Uh, so right now, when I run a new automation, when I create one, I can run Automator and by pressing tab, I have access to all my automations right away. So that second to have the automation running doesn't need a click. And because of that, I can connect my work stream through Stream Deck or Keyboard Maestro or whatever it is and I'm, I, I, I still have my hands on the keyboard and that is automation. So in my head, until we figure a way for all of these things to be fully connected and you know have an, an if this and that of the things we connect with our design, until that time, what we can do is prepare for it, have a way for us to break our process into parts that we know it's, uh, every time I open a new Figma file, I press a button and I have all the things ready for me to start designing. You know, I don't need to just wait, as, uh, just take the time to ramp up by importing components. I have a layout ready for me to use, a canvas in white with the components that I'm gonna be using. And that like that 15 minute time that I had to put previously, uh, you know, it's not that I waited or uh, uh, invested a week to have that. It took months and months, um, but yeah, it's, it, it, it's literally that thing that you need to be very conscious about that if you go into let's automate everything oh man you're gonna have a lot of pain <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. a way to wrap it up yes amazing like during the conference i've mentioned a lot that i'm a huge fan of automation and that for me that's the future of design systems so i'm so so glad um, that you presented this Davo, thank you so much. Really, really, really cool. And I hope to see you, we hope to see you back again at Into Design Systems for at another workshop, session. Seven day workshop. Seven day <laughs> workshop, another session. Really, really cool stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day over there. It was such a fun uh, uh, experience and experiment. And yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was, um, it was amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very pumped up, very energized.